What's the word, y'all? I love these videos where it's just me and the microphone and I, I, I ramble about basketball for X amount of minutes. I put the amount of minutes I ramble into the title and you click the video because you are the GOAT. At the end of the day, these are just uh, my NBA opinions. You might disagree. That's completely okay. It is just basketball at the end of the day. The only thing that differentiates me from you is that I have a camera and a microphone. That's it. You know what I'm saying? We're both enjoyers of the game of basketball. We might interpret things a little bit differently. So whenever I, I do these videos where I'm just rambling, I be having bullet point notes, but like it be like one word. So like the first thing on my list is Lakers. And things have changed because the Lakers just won a game. It just wrapped up. It took all of 56 points from LeBron James to, to beat the Warriors. Shout out to Bron and company. Melo hit a big old shot. They, they played some good defense. Stanley Johnson was out there. Um, it took all of that. And, and the video originally was supposed to be, or the topic was originally, answering the question that I get way too often, or why don't I talk about the Lakers often? Um, but, you know, we could do, we could do both. Let's, let's talk about the Lakers right now because they got to win. I think that the last game when they were going against the Clippers the other night was like the lowest of the low of their season so far. And that's saying a lot because it's been a lot of – it's been way more valleys than peaks. I was going to say there's been a lot of peaks and valleys. It has not been a lot of peaks. It's been a ton of valleys this season. And I think that game against the Clippers where Reggie Jackson was getting in their they head and LeBron had to look at him weird because he was like, you Reggie Jackson, but Reggie Jackson looking back on him and like, I'm Reggie Jackson, but I got 30. You know what I'm saying? People were, were campaigning for um, – for Jerry West's logo to get goggles on it. That's that's how bad Reggie Jackson was messing up the Lakers. And I think that was the lowest of the low. This win right here is huge for them. Um, because, I mean, they're still fighting for a playoff spot, a play-in spot. And, you know, them winning right now holds holds them at the 9th seed at the moment. I don't know. If I look at the top 10 teams in the Western Conference, I feel like these are the 10 teams that are going to make it. It's just about who will end up in the 4th seed, in the 5th seed. But I feel like these are the 10 teams that are going to be competing. So, let, so, so big win for them. Um, shout out to LeBron, man. I was going to say he turned back the times, but, like, he's been killing the game all season long. Um, right now, I'm looking at ESPN.com, and I don't even know if these stats have been updated because the game just ended, so it probably hasn't. He's third in scoring right now at 28.8 points per game. He's 37. There's a legitimate chance that LeBron James could lead the league in scoring, be the scoring champion at 37. The last time LeBron James led the league in scoring was in 2007-2008. He was 23 years old. It's got to be the biggest gap ever. Now, he's got to get there. He's got to pass up on Joel Embiid, and it seems impossible because Joel Embiid is like a guaranteed 30, except when he's going against Bam Adebayo, and then Giannis feels like a guaranteed 32. But it's a possibility that LeBron could do this. And, like, there's a reason. It's no coincidence that LeBron is out here hooping or averaging more points this year than any of the years since he was 25. There's a reason for that. And, actually, I think there's two reasons. The first one is he's going for Kareem. This, he's, he, that's completely okay. If you had the opportunity to become the greatest or the all-time leading scorer in NBA history, why wouldn't you do the thing? And I think the reason why he's going on the gas on this one is because over the past two seasons, he saw injuries to the first time in his career, and that was foreign to him. So he don't know, hey, man, my quad, my my calf, all these things might flare up a little bit. So let me go out there and try to get myself a 30 so I can narrow the gap. And he's close to passing number two. And I think number two is Carmelo, Malone, right? I think it's Carmelo. Malone. He's close to passing Carmelo, Malone. I think he's going to do that this season relatively soon. The second reason why he's doing this is, like I said earlier, it was all of 56 points for them to beat the Warriors. He's doing it at a necessity. Any other season, LeBron doesn't want to average 30 points per game. That's just not his prerogative. It's weird to say this, and I, I've had some pushback on this statement before, and I understand if you disagree. Um, LeBron, by nature, is more of a – facilitator than the score and it's go it's weird to say that considering he's going to be the all-time leading scorer in NBA history playoffs and regular season he already got that but regular season by itself it's weird to say that about the dude that's number one in that thing but I think we can all agree by nature LeBron James is more of a facilitator set things up type dude than a I'm gonna go out there and give you 40 a night you know but on this team who is he really facilitating for it's like ah oh, I guess I gotta do it again and this fourth quarter specifically because um, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. I don't watch Lakers games very often. I'm, I'm going to admit that. It's just like I treat them like every other team in the NBA. If I'm not really interested in watching you play, I just won't watch. I'm not – you know what I'm saying? So I will I will keep track of a Lakers game, and I'll see if it's close with X amount of minutes, and I'll tune in. And I would more I would much rather watch all LeBron's, LeBron's possessions than watch the entire Lakers game. And that's what I usually do when it comes to the Lakers. Um, but I, I will see, like, oh, if it's a close game going into the fourth quarter, in. I watched the whole fourth quarter, and that was ridiculous for LeBron. It seemed like he could not be stopped, and he wasn't. So this is cool. It's cool to see 37-year-old LeBron James do this. Don't take it for granted, y'all. We don't know how long we're going to be able to see this type of LeBron James performances individually. You know, forget talking about the Lakers. Oh, no, not forget talking about the Lakers. I want to answer the question. 
of why I don't talk about the Lakers. The same way you see other creators, and this is not a shot at creators because I, I understand why you do it, or like the people on TV. This is what I see. You're going to turn on TVs, on TNT, ESPN, ABC, and you're going to see the Lakers plan. Ah, that's Lakers content. Then the next day, next morning, you're going to turn on ESPN, Lakers content. That's all they're going to talk about. You're going to go to YouTube. You're going to see Lakers content. And I just didn't want to fall into the same as everybody else. You know what I'm saying? It's eat. Listen, if I wanted things to pop off on this channel, all you got to do is make a video about the Lakers the night they lose by 30. Make a video about the Lakers the, the day Russell Westbrook has a terrible game. That's easy views, but I'm not, I'm not really here to do that. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm treating them like I would treat any other team. And I understand the expectations are super high for them, and they're the most disappointed team in the entire league by far. And I understand why people are talking about them. But I just like it got to a point in this season where I was like, okay, that's the same as this team. And I'm not gonna look at them any other way. So that's why I don't talk about them often. They have to they have to show me that they deserve to be talked about. You know what I'm saying? Would you rather me just come in here and just just talk trash about the Lakers for 15 minutes? I'm sure some of y'all would enjoy that for sure. But you gotta show me that you 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 know what I'm saying, you're worth talking about. And this win, could that do that? I don't know because the Warriors are, are looking bad as well. Um, I, this I would guess. I'm going to go out on the limb. I, I ain't fact check this. I would guess this is the longest losing streak of their season with four. And they are the three seed now. You remember earlier in the season, um, the Warriors. Hold on. Let me let me go ahead and see. The, there was a conversation on do we think that this Warriors team could beat the last Warrior team 73-9 and nine record? Because they started off so crazy. They lost the fifth game in the season, lost the 13th game in the season, and then lost the 20th game of the season. So they were 17-3 and three at one point of the season. And they and, and woo, some of these games, the Pelicans, 41? Did you, did, wait, who lost by 41? Yeah, 41-point 41 lead, 41-point 41 game. But that don't count. That was old Pelicans. That was first 10 games Pelicans. This Pelicans team is different. Um, yeah, and it was like a legit conversation, like, oh, Steph Curry, unanimous MVP, um, uh, they might beat their own record with this roster, and that's just a testament to this and that, and, uh, they're on the four-game loser streak, and it has not looked good, um, and, and somebody asked me on Twitter, um, a Warrior fan asking me for my analysis, what, what the hell is going on, why are we losing, um, these last games, and the reality is that you not having Draymond Green is so significant. It's a simple answer. A lot of the time, the simplest answer is the right answer. I know that once Draymond went out, they went on that streak, but listen to the teams that they beat on that streak when Draymond Green uh, first went out with his injury, right? Hold on, hold on. It was. I said I didn't have notes, but I do have some tabs open because these are the things I want to talk about. Um, if they beat Houston, they beat Utah without Donovan Mitchell. They beat Dallas by 40. I'm going to guess some things. Uh, Luka did play that. Damn. That was without. Damn. Hey, that's a different team. Dallas is a different team now that they were there. Um, then they beat Minnesota, Brooklyn without KD, Kyrie, and James Harden at that point. Houston again. Uh, they beat the Spurs, Sacramento, and OKC. Those are the games that streak that they went on when Draymond Green went out. You're like, oh, okay, they might be able to stay afloat. And then now they start playing against better talent. Let them go against Utah again. And this time, Donovan Mitchell plays. It was no Rudy Gobert, but Donovan Mitchell plays. They lose. They go against New York. They lose against New York. It was at this point, is a bad loss because the Knicks ain't won a game in months, it feels like. Um, and then they lose against the Clippers, Denver, and then Dallas, Minnesota, and Dallas, and now the Lakers. Draymond Green being there. I, I, I never, ever in my lifetime want to hear any more Draymond Green slander because I, I just think that he's one of the most slandered players in the NBA history. Not history. Maybe history is a stretch, but current day NBA. And, I mean, some of it is, is warranted, right? He talks... He had the kicking in the balls thing a couple years ago. Like, he's a vocal person. And then if you're not actually watching the games, you see the 8-8-6, eight, eight, and six, and you're like, all-star, um, um, Hall of Famer. And I understand why you would say that. But then you watch games like this, and you're like, man, this, this team is missing rebounding significantly. Uh, and they, they still waiting on James Wiseman to potentially help that. And I ain't, I ain't got no expectations for that. They're missing rebounding, defense, and half-court offense. Draymond Green is those three things. He's those three things. You don't have that. And I, I, I don't want to be the dude, but Wiggins has been ass. All-Star Wiggs is not. All-Star Wiggs, he got announced at the All-Star game. And he went on a little tear. People are clipping me saying that he didn't deserve to be an All-Star. He dropped 30 one day like Kenny. He has not been good. And you would want your second All-Star player to step up when your third All-Star player is out. And he has it, bro. Can't, this team don't have they, – they this is the reason why they lost the game, today's game. Yes, the defense was ass. They were getting beat back door. They couldn't stop LeBron James, but they couldn't hit a free throw. I, they, you can't hit a free throw. Wiggins is shoot like 50% of the free throw line in like the last two months. 
It's not a wicked stick, but it's just it's a team thing. They don't know how to hit the free throws. You hit an average amount of free throws, you win this game. But they don't. You know what I'm saying? And Klay Thompson is still, it's weird to see. I just looked at it. Um, Klay Thompson is averaging like 18 points per game. It don't really feel like that, especially recently. He's been struggling. In the last couple games, he's, he's, he's definitely shot them in the foot. And I've been sending some wild takes about Klay Thompson on Twitter because of it. And I, I, I would not go that far just because bro missed two years of basketball. I, if you had the expectations of Klay Thompson being the sniper that he was or being the um, the player that he was before the injury, you are you are crazy to even have that expectation considering how much time he actually missed of the game of basketball. And some of these games, I how do I say this? Because Klay Thompson should should have the respect of being on the court because it only takes one for Klay to see go in and then he can hit three more. But some of these games t- tonight or the game against Dallas recently. It feels like he, he uh, I don't even want to say it. Sometimes there are better options to have on the court at certain times. Let's just say that. Let's just say that. But I understand having him out there. You got to guard him. It's Klay Thompson. But like today they did close out with both Klay Thompson and Jordan Poole. But I think in the Dallas game, if I remember correctly, uh, Jordan Poole was on the bench, even though Jordan Poole might have been the second best player in that game. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I've been seeing people talk about Steve Kerr. I don't know, man. I don't know. But they are falling to the third seed because the Memphis Grizzlies are still doing their thing. Um, and hey, <laughs> transition to my next topic, NBA discourse, NBA discourse. Um, we have to be better as a, as a collective. We have to be better again. I will always say this. There's, there's nothing wrong with a little harmless comparisons talking about player X versus player B player X versus player Y. There's not this. It can be very, very harmless, especially if it's just you and your homies talking, talking it. This Ja Morant versus Derrick Rose that grinds my gear so much. And it's not, it's listen, this is not Kenny Beecham, the Chicago Bulls fan that grew up a fan of Derrick Rose because he was from the city of Chicago, from where I grew up, and saw him take the Bulls to the conference finals. This is not that Kenny Beecham. It's not. It's the it's the can't we just enjoy things, Kenny Beecham. You know what I'm saying? If this could if you was comparing John Morant to any other player, I would still feel the same way. I understand why you compared it to John Morant in the third year taking the league over. Derrick Rose's third year, one MVP. Both super electric, high-flying, super fast, highlight after highlight player. I understand why you would do it. And again, if we just and me and the homie shopping, oh, Derrick Rose MVP versus God, yeah, it's cool. But when y'all start stretching it, we got to be better. We could just enjoy the things, man. I'm not making the argument for the Derrick Rose MVP case. I've done that before. I've done that before. Cause it, it, oh my God. If, if we talk about the, the MVP award that people want to see snatched more than any, it's like Steve Nash's MVP. They want to get that to Kobe. And then Derrick Rose 2011. Y- y'all want to get that to Braun so bad. This is this is what I gotta tell you. He's not gonna get it. <laughs> I'm not gonna make the conversation. But you got to look deeper than the counting stats. And that, that was that was the only thing that I saw. If you're trying to take the, the award away from Derrick Rose, you th- you were looking at the stats. It's deeper than that. And you know it is. You, f- you fucking know it is. This is a game of basketball. Narratives matter. And there was a na- high, big narrative behind Derrick Rose that third season. And he deserves it. He deserves it. But we got to be better, man. Anytime player X is going crazy, it's just like, oh, but what about this player that might be retired or old now? I, I'm taking the younger dude over this dude because of because recency bias and th- the game of basketball. Cause cause I've been seeing like the stats next to each other. Oh, John Morant's averaging this in his third season, and Derrick Rose averaging this in his third season. Did we adjust for pace? Yes or no? Let me know in the comment section. Did we adjust for pace? Yes or no? Just, I just I just think that we can enjoy John Morant's season for the magnificent season that it is and not have to compare it to anybody else's in history. You know, anybody else is agree. Let's just let third year Josh crazy. And you know what? I ain't getting many things right in my um, my predictions of the awards, but I'm getting John Morant, uh, most approved player, right for show. Uh, what a surprise considering where they started. I mean, they were like the opposite of the Golden State Warriors, right? They started off the season ass. They were like the worst defense in the league by far. And here they are as a two seed. The thing I like the most about this is that it, John Moran is just an amazing leader. That's that's for sure. I mean, John Moran as a leader is ridiculous. The fact that he had like 42 points in that game, they ended up with 50, and the team was like, Ja, go get the ball. Go get it. And they did this whole photo op afterwards. That's love. You know what I'm saying? 
that that lets you know that he is a great leader and everybody on the team just wants to see him be successful because at the end of the day his success is correlated with their success um i just, I just absolutely love watching this team play but i've definitely been seeing some stuff and actually my boy pierre said this on our podcast today because of the love that john and this I don't say I agree with this, but because of the amount of attention and, and love John Morant is getting, that's turning people off to John Morant. And I, I don't necessarily understand it. And here, here's why. John Morant doesn't control what Omar from SportsCenter posts or what Caroline from House of Highlights posts. He can't control that. He just goes to play basketball. It just so happen that they are in the, they're in the business of clicks and views. You know what I'm saying? It's it's no different than like people on TN or um ESPN talking about the Lakers every single day. If if you saying that Ja Morant's views are 37 percent higher than Jokic's views or Donovan Mitchell, I'm just trying to think of important or good players. Donovan Mitchell views, and and my job is to give views. In this sense, I'm, technically my job is to give views, and I'm not doing this. But in this sense, on Instagram and stuff like that, I understand why they're posting it. And them posting him is not going to make me dislike Ja Morant. Because I've talked to Ja. I've interviewed Ja. Cool-ass dude. Like, legit. I understand why his team would go to war for him. He's just a cool-ass down-to-earth dude. I've, I'm not going to name no names, but I've had um, interviews, and this is during the Zoom era, with athletes that you could tell that they don't want to be there, which is fine. You can, you're just talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Dude's this dork that want to talk basketball. I mean, I understand. Ja Morant showed up early chatted with me before as we was getting technical things done we he stayed afterwards you know what i'm saying he was just a cool ass dude and i can't let a hoh post make me hate him because he's great at basketball and he seems like a cool dude you know what i'm saying so i'll never i'll never understand that i'll never understand that it was like i mean you see this every year with it with a person or with a player we had the alice caruso years we had the Lamelo ball the house of Lamelo was what house of highlights was for a minute I, I, like I understand, they're in no, they're in a place of use, but I, I can't use that as the reason why I dislike a player or I can't root for this player anymore. Um, the next thing I want to talk about was the Kings. Ah, the Kings did it today. They weren't on my list, but I watched the fourth quarter of the game against the Dallas Mavericks. And reminder to you that Luca was sitting courtside, um, in street clothes. He was not playing in this one. And at one point, the Kings were up at like 17 points. And I was like, all right, that's when I turned it off for Risley. I went to go do some other stuff. And I came back, and the Dallas Mavericks had the lead. And I'm like, oh, that's terrible for a team that's, at this point, four and a half spots out of the play-in that made trades at the deadline to be a play-in team. Now, what I will say, De'Aaron Fox, since the trade, rejuvenated, looks great. He had a career high today, if I'm not mistaken, or close to a career high today. Um, and I still think the idea of the two the two players they have could work. But people, I keep reading this in articles and on Twitter, they're like, oh, they they gonna be all right. This this trade wasn't necessarily for this year. It's about this is they're doing the Bulls thing. You remember the Bulls traded for Vucevic. They gave up some young pieces and Wendell Carter, two first round picks. Um, and then the Kings gave up Tyrese Halliburton. Who would you rather have? Wendell Carter and two first round picks or Tyrese Halliburton? That's a that's a question because Franz Wagner was one of the first round picks and his ass a hooper. Um, either way. And then they didn't make the play in. They made that big old splash at the deadline. They made the biggest splash at the deadline last year, if I'm not mistaken. They didn't make the play in. Um, and then next year, look at that. They're the number three, four C. The Bulls suck right now. So I, four C, maybe? I don't really know. The difference is Sabonis is probably not recruiting a DeMar DeRozan type player to come to the Kings. So you got to do, you, you have to work even more than what. Uh, Carney Chauvis did last season because Carney Chauvis made some calls, made some good signings, things like that. For the first time ever, the Chicago Bulls were like a free agency team since Pau Gasol and Carlos Boozer even before that. The Kings don't have that. So if you're going to make this your Chicago trade, how are you getting the DeMar DeRozan type? Because right now, trading asset-wise, it's hard. The, the, the silver lining is that you still have your first round pick, if I'm not mistaken. So even if you miss the play-in, you can potentially get a top five pick and maybe it's De'Aaron... Um, Sabonis and I don't I think all of the people the top three people in this draft class are like forwards bigs but I think Jaden Ivey is a guard I don't know much about this class yet I guess we just have to wait and see how this goes because again I think the idea of the two t players together is is okay 
they don't have any shooting though. That that's the only thing. Like if you can surround these dudes with a little bit of shooting, I think you can make a push for the play-in. But at the end of the day, it's still just a play-in. Either way, um, there you go, Kings fans. There you go. No, you know what fans have been hitting me up fucking heavily more like more than any other team right now currently. It's the Pelicans. And listen, I understand you're on a four-game win streak. You just blew out the Utah Jazz by like a thousand points. I understand it. But what I what I dislike when y'all hit me up and say, Kenny, talk about our favorite team. One dude hit me. And this is not a shot at you, my boy. Because I, I think you rock with the videos. Because you wouldn't tweet me saying this stuff if you didn't rock with the videos to some extent. Dang, Kenny. Man, you always talk about the Pelicans when we losing. You ain't you ain't said a peep and we're on this four-game winning streak. And, like, I was taken aback. I was flabbergasted by that. I've been, I've been damn near the captain of the Herb half. I, I was talking about Jackson Hayes, the power forward position. What, you want me to do a whole dedicated video for your team, be on a four-game win streak on a play-in? Come on, man. Y'all get talked about in passing. You can talk about in passing, and we have done that. And what I think happens is that I'll do a recap video, right? And obviously, in a recap video, if I talk about six games, I can't have six things in the title. So I'll pick the thing that I start the show off with. Um, James Harden debut goes nuts. In that video, I also talked about six different games. But because it wasn't titled Your Favorite Team, you didn't click the video, so you wouldn't even know that I talked about the Pelicans already. You wouldn't even know. But I do like what's going on over there, dog. <laughs> I do. I said this in a video a couple days ago. We were talking about Zion. I I love the CJ McCollum trade. And it's been working out. CJ said after um after his last game or two games ago, the difference is my whole life I've been the secondary ball handed behind Dame, and now right now I'm the dude. Yeah, Brandon Ingram, Tiny Dog is still one of the most underrated 20, under twenty five players. It's still weird to see that he's under twenty five. And and Herb Hive is still going well. Jackson Hayes has been playing well. I understand. I like your team, bro. Relax. And. I would, listen, personally, and this is me speaking for myself, I would rather my team get no publicity than a lot of publicity, publi pub publicity, because that's how you get expectations on your roster and your team, and that's how you ended up disappointing people. If the Bulls, if people weren't hyping the Bulls up early in the season, we started off so great, I wouldn't get people mentioning me 100 times when Stat Muse puts up the stat that the Bulls are like 1-15 and 15 against good teams. You know what I'm saying? If you were just an underrated team, nobody cares. When the Cavs are in a three-game losing streak, nobody's really talking about it because nobody was really talking about the Cavs when they were good. I would prefer it that way as a fan. And then my mentions won't be crazy. So let's say what let's say I'd make a whole dedicated video. Again, this is not towards Pelicans fans, but it's just the one that's on my mind. If I made a whole dedicated video about the Pelicans and then y'all end up going on a five-game losing streak and losing out on the play-in, then what? Then what? Now people are going to be talking about the, the team. You know what I'm saying? Relax, bro. And you if you know what your team is capable of, that's all that really matters. I would much rather be under the radar and surprise some people when it's playoff time come around than the vice versa. For sure. One hundred percent of the time. Uh speaking of surprising. <laughs> I need to get better at my segues because that was not good. Um speaking of surprising, the Dallas Mavericks are yeah. Again, they they came back against the Kings. We need we need some type of Spencer Dinwiddie crypto nickname. I don't know what it is because yet. But he's been hoping. He's been hoping. And that was one of the, probably the most questionable trade at the deadline. Because Spencer Dinwiddie has been, had been asked the entire season. Davis Bertans couldn't hit an open shot. So it was like, dang, y'all traded Porzingis. And again, I, I, I think I mentioned this in my video. I understand why you trade Porzingis. I was just confused by the package. Yep, there it is. Spencer Dinwiddie. Looking great. He just needed a different opportunity to a little change the scenery. And I like that because Spencer did what he's a, a more likable guy. Another guy that I interviewed before. Um, just a very likable guy. And he kept it a buck with us. You know what I'm saying? If you could get an opportunity to watch CJ McCullough be on the podcast for 10, 20 minutes or an hour, do that. Because he won't lie to you. When I when I talked to him, um, he was still with the Brooklyn Nets. And we're, this is a group thing. So I had, I had me and my other podcast homies. And we were virtual because we were doing this Twitter show. And we asked him, like, Y'all be y'all be running the ones in Brooklyn? He was like, yeah. It was like, who be winning, you or Kevin Durant? And he said, like, in the ones, I be busting Kevin Durant ass. I don't know how true it is because <laughs> Kevin Durant, I feel, I just feel like Kevin Durant might be one of the greatest one-on-one -on -one players of all time, but who knows? Um, But, like, you know what I'm saying? That's not an answer. You get it from everybody. So how to Spencer that with you. I, I mentioned this before. I got my own personal tier list of priority watching in the NBA. There are some teams 
once we get to this point that it's how many games? What are we, 60-plus games to the season? I saw everything I needed to see from, from their organization this year. Uh, better, like ne- better luck next year. One of those teams is the Knicks. So as I, as I look at the standings right now, I had no idea these boys who have lost seven in a row and nine of their last ten. I didn't know it had got that bad where they were 13 games under 500. I had no idea, legitimately had no idea, that they are just a couple games better than the Indiana Pacers. That's whack. I had no idea that it had got that bad. <laughs> I also didn't know that the, the, the um, Houston Rockets haven't won a game in like a month or two. I'm exaggerating, but they've lost 12 in a row. You know what I'm saying? I believe, you know, a lot of basketball left, that the 10 in the East and the 10 in the West are probably the 10 they're going to make the play in and playoffs. It's just a matter of who gets where. Like right now, the Trail Blazers are two games out of the play in, but they're not playing for much. Anthony Simons has had almost 40 tonight, and they it wasn't even really that much of a game. He's been killing, though. He's been averaging like 24 since he's been a starter and, and, and super efficient. The Spurs are three and a half games back, and they, they haven't won in a minute. They're still trying to get popped to, to get that record, and uh, they just not giving him the opportunity to. Another game where in the fourth quarter they completely folded. That has been their recipe all season long. They they just for the first time um, all season have a negative point differential. Y'all, they're, they're 18 games, 16 games under 500, and they just started to have a negative point differential. Think about that. That's... They should be like a 500 team. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how math works. But they should be a near 500 team, but they just can't close fourth quarters. And then the Kings are even below them. And now East, I mean, the Washington Wizards, they lost. Uh, the Washington Wizards be staying afloat a little bit. But they're two and a half games below the Hawks who are starting to put it together a little bit more. And then I just mentioned the Knicks being bad. So I just feel like these are the 10 teams. It's a matter of seeding. And the seeding is a big thing. Because we got some teams that are hooping like the, the Boston Celtics and some teams that are falling like the Bulls and the Cavaliers. Luckily, the Toronto Raptors, I'm saying luckily for me as a Bulls fan, also it's raining hard as hell. It's the first rain we've got in the new house, and I'm starting to think that this house won't, stay, won't hold up, G. I, I'm just saying, that sounds hard. Um, luckily for me as a Bulls fan, um, the teams beneath us, like the Raptors and the Brooklyn Nets, haven't got it together yet either. So, like, the likelihood of us falling out of the top six, probably unlikely. I, I guess it's nothing is impossible with 20 games left, but it seems unlikely at this point. I just want Alex Caruso back, y'all. I just want I want I want bro to come back a hoop. That's all. I'll be one or two, bro. I, I legit be trying to make a conscious effort to to talk about the things around the league that I think are interesting or try to give people and teams their spotlight when I can. It's just what the hell? I just don't know if the house is gonna hold. It's harder, it's harder than you think. That's all I'm gonna say. So c- c- cut a brother some slack, bro. If I don't, if I don't mention your team. In a week, and they, they go 3-0, and cut it by the, some slack, bro, please. Just remember, I'm a one-man show around here. I ain't got no editors. I'm just a man with a microphone and, and a brain and a MacBook that cuts up footage. All right, that's my, that's my ramble. Did I, did I say anything? Probably not.